Hi, and welcome to the Retail Roundup. This is Shama Maher from Scaling Retail. This week I'd like to chat with you about global expansion. You know, Saks has recently started to take a deeper interest and look into expanding offshore into countries like India. Why would they do that? How can you as a small brand implement those same strategies and what does that mean? Well, when you take a look at emerging marketplaces and global expansion, especially in luxury products, you'll notice that the Indian marketplace is starting to see revenues of about $6 billion each year, with an estimated 15 to 20% growth rate each year. So how are luxury brands starting to compete within that place and what are they doing? Well, there are a few different models that they're implementing. The first is obviously the franchising model. So by this method, what they're able to do is have a retail distributioner or someone who's importing or having the name of Saks Fifth Avenue franchise and pay Saks a certain amount of money to then have their product, their store, and have it essentially be a Saks in India without Saks necessarily needing to have the funds to go into renting a retail space or really having to do much research into the products and demographics that they're going to sell in India. It would really be up to the franchiser to be able to then work with Saks, find out who those distribution people are and kind of bridge that relationship from that perspective. A lot of franchising happens, you know, when it comes to the retail space. You know, the Barney's New York store that's found in Japan is franchised. Um, a lot of stores in Brazil are franchised. And why? Because it's very expensive for a brand or a retailer to effectively set up operations and manage a business if that's not currently where their distribution is. And what are some of those reasons? Well, obviously legal, financial, and to be quite honest, I think it can be a huge risk if you're not already familiar with that marketplace. So by doing this franchising arrangement, I think it actually becomes really beneficial you know, for that new marketplace and for that, um, that company in India to be able to then import the Saxon identity, but use their skill set in terms of demographics, price points, and assortment planning to then do that most effectively. Now as a small brand, you might have started distribution and growing your business in your home country, but how would you then start to think about doing business abroad? It's a very interesting question. It's a whole new different set of customers who have different price point sensitivities, have different needs in terms of sizing and product availability, and really want products at a different pace. So even for example, within the domestic marketplace of the United States, you might even find that your customers in New York are very different than your customers in California. So when you sell to those boutiques and you're pitching your lines, you might be doing so differently. So take that vision and expand it even further into something international. Right? You as a pitching to your customer base here in the United States or wherever you're located and then sequentially also then building out your plan and your strategy to then identify that marketplace and create products that are made for that marketplace. So clearly it's not for the faint of heart but for the faint of resources. Um, it can actually be very consuming in terms of the research and the analysis and setting up who that customer is and doing that proper market research. So definitely a lot to think about. Hopefully we'll start to see some great news in terms of expansion on SACS, and we'll keep you posted. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.